Welcome to the world united. Welcome to the world united. Okay, thank you Esther Divine for that divine music. And thank you all for joining us. All of all of the panelists here, such amazing, beautiful messages, every single one of them. And I'm excited to see this get out to the world and, uh, and inspire hundreds of thousands of people. This is very exciting. I have a few questions and I'm going to invite you. So I see, good, we're, we're all uh, got our videos on and unmuted. Um, and I'm going to invite you, since we have uh, four amazing uh, panelists and speakers here, when, when you answer a question, um, just out of respect for the others, let's, be, let's try to be nice and concise. I've got a, a number of questions, and I'd like to get through as many as we can. So if we get stuck on one and then we can't get through the rest, uh, that, that would be uh, unfortunate. So, so let's, yeah, let's, I invite you to be concise. And, uh, and we will start out with something that we often ask. We're all mentors in, in different areas. And uh, we, are often, we often ask our audiences, our clients, or, or the different people. And when we're attending something, we get asked, think deeply about the question, who am I and why am I here? And we often ask that, and yet it seems that we, sometimes we don't necessarily share our idea of that with others. Um, so I would like to have you share your answers to who am I and why am I here for our listening guests. And let's go ahead and uh, We'll just go in the order that I have up here. Um, we have Paula, Stacy, Felicia, and Betty Ann. That's the, the order I have on top. And then we'll do different orders for different, uh, different questions. But Paula, would you like to respond to that? I would love to. Who am I? I am a daughter of God. And why am I here? To learn how to love and to serve and to do that, to touch the hearts and help change the lives of as many people on this planet as I can during my turn on earth. Beautiful, thank you. Yes, lovely. And Stacy, would you like to share? Yes, I'd love to. So who am I? Well, I, I could give so many answers as could everyone about the roles we play and the labels we have. But at the heart of it, because I've accessed my divine guidance, I'm aware of my soul's purpose or my life purpose. And that's to be of service to humanity in a variety of ways. So knowing that informs everything else that I do. Beautiful. Thank you. Lovely. And Felicia, please. I'm laughing because it's like, dang, I got to go after all of that. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, I, I agree with what's already been said in terms is that there's so many ways that we can answer this question, right? But foundationally, the thing that I, I can say the words and my journey is to discover them, right? And so it's to understand that I am, I, I am the divine expression. You know, I'm a, I'm a spiritual being having a spiritual experience in a human form that I am the divine expression of all that is. And my purpose is to wake up and to express that in a way that truly bears witness to the power that's in every single one of us. Hmm. Beautiful. I, I love that term that you use, that I am a divine expression. It's beautiful. Great. Thank you. Betty Ann, would you uh, care to respond? I am the truth of the, I live both the masculine and the feminine every day. So I believe that my time on earth is, in this lifetime, is meant to help the 
in my small way, I think there's many of us on the planet doing it all at the same time, but to awaken the feminine and the value of the feminine for humanity. Beautiful. Wow. I'm so glad we asked this. I would, the reason I asked this specific question is because I just came back from a week long Qigong uh, practitioner training and we spent, we got with a partner and spent 10 minutes asking the person, who are you? And going deeper and deeper and deeper. And for every one of us, it was just a beautiful, very emotional and deep, powerful experience. And uh, so I love that, uh, that you have all obviously spent time thinking about this and, and come to a, a deep, profound understanding of who you are and why you are here. Um, that's going to be powerful for if, if all of humanity can, can come to these realizations. I'm going to jump off of what, uh, what um, Betty Ann just mentioned about the, the masculine and the feminine, um, because it, it is a, a powerful topic right now as we evolve from a, a world of, uh, that's physically, uh, that's run by physical power, and now we're moving into a more intuitive and, and, uh, and e even uh, emotional and, and the, the yin of, of the yang, um, as, as was mentioned earlier. So, so I would love to know, do men and women have different roles to play in this expansion and the raising the consciousness of humanity? Or do we all just have the same role we need to move forward um, basically in the same way? Or, yeah. So um, actually, since, since, uh, since you're right there, why don't we just, uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and let you um, answer at will as you feel inspired. So I, I won't, I'll just call on you as, you as you step up. Sure, I have some thoughts to share. Um, as al already has been addressed by several of my esteemed colleagues, um, the issue of masculine energy and feminine energy. And I believe that the world is in the state it's in because it is only the masculine energy that has been predominantly honored for so very long. And I believe in the new world paradigm that's emerging um, a real honoring of the feminine energy is taking place. Uh, in America, as I suspect in many parts of the world, um, we are taught, uh, indoctrinated from a very young age that in order to succeed in life, we need to utilize our masculine energy. So that's what we're taught and that's what we learn to do. Um, but in understanding that, the, that both are important and need to be equal, and that feminine energy is receptive, it is loving, it is about cooperation and collaboration, and those sorts of ideas and, and uh, energies in order to emerge in a whole new humanity different from what has been before. Beautiful, thank you. So anyone else, uh, I'll just repeat the question. So, so uh, do men and women have different roles in expanding and raising the consciousness of humanity? Uh, Felicia, please. Yeah, I'll jump in. Sean, I love your 60 seconds or less questions, right? It's like, <laughs> these really deep questions, it's like, you know, Mark, I know. <laughs> no, no, it's great. It's like really causes me to think quickly and deeply, right? So, so what comes to comes to mind um, when I think about that question? It's a both and, right? Um, it's a um, it, in terms of um, I think every single one of us has a core purpose of, and it's been said in like a million different ways already, um, so brilliantly that our core purpose is to wake up to the reality of who we really are and to cultivate that in such a way that we are practically and tangibly expressing that in a way that truly makes a difference, not just with the people around us, but with the world at large. 
we all have our own individual ways of expressing that, whether man or woman, just me, Felicia, Stacy, Betty Ann, Sean, Dr. Ugandar, Paula, every single one of us has our own unique way of expressing that. Then we bring in the whole concept of our gender. You know, what is it that we bring as our gender? And I think what, what I'm coming to understand is that whatever my relationship has been in terms of my personal gender and ways that it has served me and ways that it has, I have allowed it to limit me. It is my personal responsibility to lean into that and, and, and to grow and cultivate that which is of higher service and to release that which is no longer of service. And as we all do that, then we're bringing forward the masculine and feminine in each one of us individually, to collectively. Lovely, wonderful, thank you. And yes, and Paula and then Betty Ann, please. Oh, Paula, you're, you're muted, Paula. <laughs> Sorry, there you go. The, the dog was barking a minute ago. So <laughs> that I, what I was going to say, what I was saying <laughs> is that my dear friend, Reverend Searcy just said exactly what I was going to say. I mean, it was just like, okay, she opened her mouth and out came my opinion. So there we go. It was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Well, Sean, I, yeah, thank you. I, I believe that we are at a time, as Stacy mentioned, on our planet where it is time to make this transformation from the masculine that we've been in for a few hundred years to the feminine values. And so that is the, the deep knowing that comes from the feminine. It's time, time is coming now. It does take the role of the masculine to bring it into fruition, to have the courage to step outside of the box that you're in to get to something larger and something that's different. Change is not easy and it takes the action of the masculine. So it doesn't have to be a man or a woman. It has to be someone acting out those, those principles. So. In, I have developed a tool, an assessment tool for testing masculine and feminine energy. And what I found in going around and giving workshops is that 70% of the women test feminine energy and 70% of the men test masculine energy. It does vary by age. I find that if a man has stayed at home doing paternity leave, that he will test more highly in feminine energy. I find that women who are working as lawyers or in uh, construction sites or investment banks, they will test higher in masculine energy. I find also that younger men test higher in feminine energy. So there's, a, and it, it varies by geograph geographic, it varies by um, the kind of work that people are doing. But the bottom line is men and women can bring forward and feel that it's time men may not identify these skills that they now need or that, this, that they want as feminine. I would like them to, because I think that acceptance of the feminine means that we all are going to move forward more collectively. Um, but we all can identify that we need to make this change to be more intuitive, to be more concerned about others and to be less production oriented. And if you wanted to get into the whole COVID thing, it could be exactly what's slowing us down right now. And this is the change that we need to bring on a new way of looking at the world. So I do think that we all have that ability, whether we're men or women, but I do think that the feminine is the knowingness that it is now time to make the change and the masculine is the, yeah, we got to do it. Lovely. Thank you for your insights on that. And I just want to, um, I want to, honor you guys and thank you um, because this is I've been in groups before where it was and it literally at the United Nations where the way you spoke about it all of every one of you spoke about it as honoring the feminine but also keeping understanding that there's an, a very important place for the masculine um, I was actually in a, in a session at the UN where they were talk, talking about getting rid of the masculine and starting villages with no men, with only women, because the men were the cause of all the problems. <laughs> so the men are wow. the villain and the cause of the Extremes. problems. Extremes. 
we need to yeah. pull away from that and get the so I, I just I want to express my appreciation for you to understanding organically how this needs to work together and uh, and not putting one side above the other or putting one side down. Then I 100% believe that it is the yin and yang and we have to do it equally and together. Um, the birds of the wing or the wings of the bird. Um, so as a, as a spiritual person, I couldn't possibly do to another that which is. Unhonored, non-respected position that I've had to experience so many times as a female, knowing what that's been like and how painful it's been. I, I would never do that to another. And well, it's, uh, I mean, please. There's a to acknowledge that I, I think that there's a human tendency oftentimes, right? That when, when we're moving to something new, that there's a tendency to want to leave behind what no longer works, right? And, and cast it as bad. And so there's a level of, of spiritual maturity, which I deeply appreciate with what's here, to be able to acknowledge the, the power of where we're going and, and, and bring the good from where we came from along. So I think that there needs, there also needs to be a high degree of understanding and compassion for all of us, wherever we are in our process. Even if we're in a company with people who are like, you know, slash that out, it's like, okay, that's, that's, that's part of the progression, right? Now it's to speed it up and to quicken the gap where we don't have to hang out there long. But I, I personally have found in the years that I've been doing this, that that's oftentimes where people go I and mean, it's kind of like the teenage stage, right? And, and to love people throughout the entire journey um, because that will hasten it. And I just want to say real quick, Polly, you're, I want your steps. You know, what you wrote, and I know that, you know, I saw that you were referring to it. I, that was just, I, I, give me a checklist. Tell me what <laughs> You're so awesome. <laughs> I love you. I, 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 yes, yes. See, we need, we need both sides. We need that, that, that compassion and, and nurturing and loving, and we need the checklist of king, 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 get it done. We, we need both <laughs> sides to actually yeah. be successful in whatever we're doing. I love that. Um, wonderful. Okay. We, we're doing great. I am excited. Thank you for, for your thoughtful responses. Um, so I'm going to go into uh, a, a little different uh, topic right now. This is going to be an interesting one. I, I'm, I'm very interested to hear what you have to say. How can we know if we're being true to our divine selves and honoring our divine selves, or if we are being selfish. I think this topic comes up often because um, this whole idea of I'm worthy and I'm not gonna make excuses for who I am and I'm just gonna be me. And, and then they take it, it because sometimes people are selfish and sometimes people are rude and mean and that, and to be able to say, make people accept you just the way you are and you don't have to change anything. And how can we know if we're being, if we're honoring the divine self or if we are indeed being selfish and pushing people away? Paula, would you like to start? Yes, I, um, we're in a women's session and we love you, Sean. And what I've also learned is that women have a sense we have we talk about our heart of hearts we talk about an intuition we talk about you know being able to know and i think that's one of the gifts that women were given and they talk about a woman's intuition for a real reason and having worked uh, like so many of these my colleagues have with thousands of women worldwide for decades and i love saying that decades <laughs> because i'm 71 years young and I have been doing this since I was 27. So I, I know the women of the world and I know that there is a, a part of our spirits, our very souls, that when we're off or when something is off, we have a, a sense of discernment is a way to say it. 
that uh, that but it does require it doesn't mean all women have worked on have worked on developing this but those who have that we work on it all four of us have <laughs> that we are able to develop this sense that is almost indescribable but there is a knowing when you in your heart of hearts when you are in alignment and when you're not, and actually when other people with whom you're working are coming from their true selves. And, and I, I believe that this is something that I love discussing things like this because it's something that, that women who are living what I like to call wide awake, and we all work at living wide awake, but when there is a development and ma maturity, like Felicia said, of the spirit, uh, of, the, of the spirituality, I think she said, uh, mature, then this is part of what becomes uh, part of our bright light as women and as women mentors for women, that we have this ability and of course, men can develop it, but it's inherently something that I count as a huge blessing, that there is a, a great understanding and a knowing and a discernment in my very soul that helps me in all that I do. So that took a little longer than a minute. I apologize. <laughs> Thank you for first, that. The first thing that came to mind for me is that selfish doesn't have to be a dirty word. And what I mean by that, for example, when I first got really in touch with my life's purpose to be of service to humanity, um, I was not paying enough attention to my own personal needs. It was all about others and being of service to others. And that produced suffering, which then produced upset, anger, resentment, all kinds of negative emotions. So I needed to step back and reevaluate and realize that without the proper self-love and self-care and nurturing of my own being, my batteries are gonna get drained really quickly and I need to recharge them in order to be of optimum service to others. So, um, you know, it selfish doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be a, a, a dirty word um, if, if you think about it in that manner. Also, um, just look at your life. Is it working? How are your relationships with others? You know, uh, romantic, <laughs> friends, colleagues on any level. Um, what kind of feedback? are you getting from the people in your life? You know, all, all what comes up when you meditate on the subject, all of those are different ways that we can get informed if we are in right relationship with this subject. Beautiful. Sean, what I always say is that it's never an either or. So, we are a combination of who we think we are inside and who the outside world tells us we are. So if we're going to be able to use the attributes of both masculine and feminine energy and stay in balance and find peace, it has to be like riding a bicycle where you push first with the masculine pedal and then with the feminine pedal, or actually I guess you would start with the feminine pedal and then the masculine pedal and keep going and you're always moving forward. So that means that you go deep inside, you check who you are, you take it out to the world, you then monitor how is that, how are people reacting to that, as Paula said, that, what, that you know when things are off. Uh, and as, as Stacy said, are, is, are you finding stress in your relationships? So clearly something's not working. So it takes a level of uh, awareness that you are paying attention to who you are and taking it forward into the world, but then you're also monitoring what the world is feeding back to you. And so it becomes that, you know, my mother used to say um, that too much of a good thing is a bad thing. And I always say that all these attributes of the masculine energy are really strengths when they're used in the proper amount. But if they're used too much, they become weaknesses. And, you know, as Stacy was describing, being concerned about others is a strength. But when you do too much of it, you give too much yourself away. So that means it's never an either or. You're 
taking care of others, you're coming back and checking in to make sure that you're taking care of yourself at the same time. Beautiful. I'm going to add just a little bit of a twist to this. Yeah, so, <laughs> when it, because I, you know, again, as, as we all do, you know, as, as the, um, the thousands of women I've had the honor of working with, you know, the first thing, part of your, uh, part of the question when you first asked it is how do we know, right, that this is the thing that we're really supposed to do? And this is the thing that I really dig deep in, especially with women, because when we listen to the question that I invited us um, to ask, what would I love? And really dig deep into listening to that life force speaking through us. And we understand that it's the desire wanting to express more uh, expansively through us. We can trust that. Our life force will never lie to us. And so when we're paying attention to what brings us most alive, not what needs to be fixed or what's pleasurable in the moment or you know, a, pa uh, a passing fancy or a passing whim, but that deep soul visceral, oh God, I would love that. That especially for women, it's learning to trust that voice and not define it as selfish because the conversation I hear consistently is, oh my gosh, this is what's gonna happen to the people around me. If I do this, they'll suffer, they'll feel neglected. So in, re in, in, in response to the conversation that has been said so far, pay attention to what's happening in your relationships. What I've noticed is that Sometimes women have to be firm when making decisions for themselves and give the people around them permission to be uncomfortable. That they may not all come along with cheerleading, yay, do this. That oftentimes there is that strife. And if we look yeah. at it in terms of it's because I'm doing this and maybe this isn't what I'm supposed to be doing, there'd be a lot of women that would stop dead in their tracks. And it's so it's realizing, right, that as we make a claim for ourselves and you begin to do things differently compared to what the people around you are used to, and you trust yourself, you trust that fundamentally you're good. I have met very few selfish women. In fact, it goes back to what Stacy was saying. It's helping them deal with that energy or that voice that says, oh my God, you're being so selfish. It's like, no, what if this act of, of moving towards something that's bringing you most alive and that act of self-care is actually the act of your highest service. It's not selfish, but it's your highest form of love. And in the form of love, it doesn't mean that everybody's gonna be able to see it right away. And usually they come along, right? But you gotta give them permission. You gotta give the people around you, especially for the women. Um, and, and I know in my own case that I had to give the people around me the dignity to be uncomfortable as I was moving forward with something that was just so out of their realm of how they saw me and how it was impacting them. Love it. I think that's a great comment because I think that so many of us, when we're making changes ourselves, we're actually make, making change for others as well. And it, it's really important for them to, re, you know, we, we become an important part of one another's process. And other people do want to keep you back where you were because that's more comfortable for them. Quite often, they're not ready for the change, but you're in one another's lives for a reason. You're changing, so it's, it's they're changing and that's what they need to be doing. So I think that's a great point. Thank you. We, we don't need permission or others who go, yay, rah, rah, you're practicing self-love and self-care in, in order to do it. Um, and, and if that means setting boundaries or helping others to understand that no is a complete sentence, then that's just part of the process. <laughs> yeah, I, love I, I, I help people understand, especially women, is to let the people closest to you off the hook from having to be the ones to support you, right? That they will support you in the way that they can support you. But we, it's like, oh, they're just not supporting me because they're not doing A, B, C, D. But you gotta remember that as you're disrupting your world, you're disrupting their world as well. So to let them off the hook and accept what they can give and go get the support from somebody else who's not nearly as invested. 
Now, I appreciate this wisdom. I asked the question very specifically because in my career of 35, 40 years, I, as a performing artist, I deal with thousands and thousands of women. I, I'm, I'm the only man in the room most of the time and I hear their conversations and I hear what they're dealing with and what they're going through. And that's been my life and it's been, um, and that's a big deal. They, they, they need to hear these things. And that's why I wanted to, to bring that up and, and let, let you share. Um, because oftentimes if I share something like this, they won't listen to it. <laughs> but if it's hear from you, they will listen to it. Well, so, here's what I love that you. Dr. Yudhakar did. There's a man facilitating the women's empowerment session. <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and a really good one at that. Yeah, you are no, so I'm not is. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I almost changed it um, because of that. I almost said, you know what? This is women's empowerment. Um, would you, wouldn't you prefer a woman to be, uh, to be mon moderating this? And, but then as I just sat with myself for a bit, I was like, you know what? There needs to be some masculine energy in there just because yeah. that's, that's, part, that's part of the equation. That's and if it it's all women talking about it, it won't bring about the, it won't come to fruition in the way it needs to. So, here, so here's, the, here's the thing, Sean. Everyone watching, listening, and all of us intuitively sense that you are in touch with your feminine energy. If you came in here full guns, blasting only masculine energy, it would be like, okay, what's he doing <laughs> facilitating? It? You know, um, let's all lift some weights, you know, during the musical <laughs> interlude. Yeah, it, but, but you're, you're perfect. And oh, I think it's great. It. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe it's the long hair. Maybe that's where no, it's You know what? That, that might be what it is. And you should see this man on stage. Oh, my gosh. He is a <laughs> dancer extraordinaire. And so at the last World Parliament on Spirituality, he spoke, of course. But when he danced, and he danced, and he just had on his long <laughs> pants, and he was there, and the women were like, okay, <laughs> this is yeah. a... What, what Sean is, is he's a renaissance man. He really is. And he can be just as comfortable in a huge crowd of women as he can with men. And the men highly respect him for that. So they don't know how to do it as well as he does. <laughs> well, Sorry, Sean, but I just have to tell on. So for that. I think we need to move on to the next question because this isn't about <laughs> me. <laughs> so, um, I, and actually this is perfect because we're all we have all either raised children or are mentors to children and youth. And so I would like to, uh, to ask, and we're gonna get really practical here in the last two questions. Um, in raising children or mentoring youth, how would you suggest we balance the masculine and feminine in teaching them? And how would, so let me just kind of guide it just a, just a touch and obviously take it where you, where you feel. But, you know, do, do we need to encourage more masculine in the, in the young girls and more feminine in the young boys? Or how, do we, how should we navigate that so that we have a more balanced future? Please. I can start. Uh, I've done a lot of mentorship. In fact, I um, formed a mentorship program at our that I initiated and I uh, philanthropically support at our university, at University of Saskatchewan, for working women. And um, of course, a great deal of what we talk about there is how study. There's many studies that show that women that we're working in a patriarchal society. So it's basically what I say is it's a Patriarchal system designed by men for men. Women have trouble navigating that system, and that's why mentorship is important. It helps you learn the ropes. And so we talk a lot about, and we review a lot of studies that show that if you're going to work in a patriarchal system, they view leadership as being interchangeable with the attributes of masculine energy. So as a woman, you have to be able to exhibit some of those characteristics in order to be considered a leader. However, our subconscious bias training also tells us that there's a certain way that women are supposed to look and act. 
And if a woman starts acting only as a man and ignores all of the attributes of feminine energy, she's not going to be liked or trusted. So we give opportunities to those that we like and trust. So you have to be able to exhibit the attributes of the masculine and not that that's bad. It means basically that you take charge, you speak with confidence, you're not afraid to make decisions, you're going to have some rules, as Paula gave us uh, some guidelines that you're going to follow. But it also means that you're going to take time to form relationships, that you're going to be concerned about how other people are feeling, you're going to want to have empathy to bring them along. And so basically, we talk a lot about how you balance the attributes of both genders. Um, and I always say that's important for men and women. And I will tell you, it's interesting, the Canadian Institute of Mining, as you heard in my CV, named me as a distinguished speaker. So I've been going across Canada and speaking to mining engineers about this topic. And I have found that they have been really open to it. So that's how I feel I'm living my purpose because these are people that this is not, you know, they're hard rock miners. They're used to going underground yeah. and having a boss. You know, it's very hierarchical. It's not the feminine model, but they're open yeah. to it. And I have men coming up to me after I speak and saying, how do I get more feminine energy? And so I have to give them ideas. And I feel like I'm mentoring these guys that are successful bosses underground about how to develop their feminines. And so I just feel that it's not only, you know, giving advice would be masculine way of mentoring. I do believe that, uh, and that's facts. That's a lot of the stuff you've heard me citing because I think we live in a very data driven world. So I make sure I have all my data lined up, but I also believe that the greatest openings for us, the greatest learning come from stories. And so I believe strongly in mentoring men and women by telling stories because instead, I think when you're given, somebody gives you advice, you tend to sort of put up a little bit of a wall, like, am I gonna accept this or not? But if you're hearing a story, you immediately open up to it and you're like, oh, how does this relate to me? And how can I make this work in my life? And what can I learn from this? So. I really say tell stories and encourage both men and women to use the attributes of both and that the most successful mentorship comes from sharing your failures so people can learn from those because that's we all tend to judge ourselves by our insides compared to other people's outsides and everybody else always looks so successful compared to us. If we can hear places where they've made failures and learn from it, that's one of the greatest gifts that you can give to somebody. Mm. Beautiful. Anyone and else like Betty, to share? Yeah, Betty Ann, you are the expert on this, and I've learned so much from you today, as I have my other colleagues. Um, you know, I, I'm blessed to have three sons and five daughters, and I know firsthand that they're very different. And uh, But I would like to just, my short answer is that I go back to that wonderful quote by Albert Schweitzer that I, that I quoted before, the way to teach this beautiful feminine and, and masculine energy is through example. Um, you know, he said there are three ways to teach. The first by example, the second is by example, the third is by example. As my sons have watched me be the CEO and travel and do these things and take leadership positions, then they see that a woman can do that. And, and, and with the daughters, you know, it's just when you teach this, by example, and not just to your own children, but in everything that you do, I believe that that, at least for children in this discussion, is the very, very best way. Be, uh, do this yourself. Be a wonderful, um, I actually don't like the word balance, but <laughs> be, be a wonderful uh, example that you can have uh, both you know, the husband and my husband change diapers right along inside me. I mean, it's like if they watch this, then these sons grew up to them taking care of the babies and changing the diapers. And it's really what are the what do they see? Because that's their best expectation. I mean, excuse me, education in the home is is just watching the parents. So it behooves us to teach that next generation about this in very important concept. Yeah, Absolutely. and I yes, Felicia. I want to um, I want to pull out something that Betty Ann shared um, in her talk, when she talked um, uh, a lot about you know the studies of how we treat um, girls and, and boys differently. 
Um, I, I think that, you know, I taught school for 20 years and I've got um, uh, stepdaughters and grandkids and, and it's being mindful about what we communicate in terms of behaviors that we value or behaviors that we discount, right? And so to, to value um, what appear to be the feminine qualities, you know, to really wrap our arms around our daughters and value how they show up and their very unique feminine ways. And, and, and Betty, and I think you talked about how, you know, um, the boys in the neighborhood got punished because they were playing dress up, you know? And so to really communicate the value of that with, um, uh, with all of our kids. Um, so I think it's absolutely helping our girls step into their masculine traits, but it's also letting our, the, um, the young girls in our lives know that we deeply value the unique qualities they bring from the feminine perspective and to really encourage that and show that it's safe. It's safe for boys to create an environment of safety for boys to be able to explore that elements about themselves and to express it. Yep. Yeah. Could not agree more as, a, as someone who is raised with a very masculine father and going into the arts and becoming a, a singer, dancer, actor, that was, that was a bit of hell trying to navigate that. So I, yeah, I completely agree with what you're saying, uh, just from a personal perspective. Yeah, any other comments on, uh, yeah. on that? Please. So it's not been part of my calling in this lifetime to physically give birth to children, but rather to give birth to tangible structures that make a positive difference in the world. Mm -hmm. And how I've expressed my maternal instincts, if you will, um, is through my rescues. Currently, Nico the dog and Luke the cat, um, <laughs> whom I shower with um, lots and lots of love and affection. So not everybody, um, Sean, is meant to physically give birth to children, um, but we, we are all creators, yes? And we create and give birth in different ways. Absolutely, and that's actually, I'm, I'm so glad you said that because that was the reason I added in the, in the question, you know, that we are, we are all, you know, either raising children or mentors to youth and children and others because there, you know, many are not actually parents and, and yet they still have, you know, my, my uh, motherly instincts still kick in. <laughs> and I, I get to go off and, and work with the, you know, the youth and the children and, and f develop that, that, that side of me as well, even though I'm not a parent. Uh, so, so thank you. Yes, all of us have that and need to develop it. So in just the last uh, couple of minutes here, we, we got about three minutes left here. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna stick to the, the one minute, basically um, quick answer uh, format. Sorry, it's a little bit emotional for me actually this one. Um, there is so much fear in the world and it's it's being engendered in many ways um whether whether it's in our personal lives or from the media or you know from the top down or amongst ourselves um and so i would i would like to ask you to contemplate for a second what advice would you give to the women and the men of the world to find personal peace and do you have specific practices that you do? Um, and, and we can, you know, we, we can obviously say, yeah, meditate. Yeah, say a prayer. But, but are there things that you specifically would like to share with people that they might be able to utilize in their daily lives from this day forward to find more peace and come in touch with that divine center? So... What I've done with that question um, since 2015 is created an event 
where people can find answers, guidance, healing, peace, solutions, uh, called the Psychic and Healing Expo. Uh, I've always done it as a physical event in on March 20th and 21st next year. It's going to be a global virtual event that I'm co-producing with Harris and Klein. Um, we are uh, anticipating 10,000 plus attendees from English speaking countries all over the world. We have fantastic speakers. It's free to attend. And if anyone is interested, which I'm sure lots of people are, uh, the website is virtualpsychicexpo.com. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Any, anyone else, please? Uh, what, what would you like to share? Thank you. Uh, Felicia. Jump in on this one. So people experience fear when they feel separated, right? That fear is a direct result of, of that, that illusion of being disconnected. And so when people express to me that they're afraid, the thing I keep doing is keep drawing, bringing attention back to the breath and not just as a meditation practice, but as an awareness that there is something so profound, so indescribable that wove every single one of us into existence and that we are here as an expression of this divine energy and that we can't even take one breath on our own. We are not breathing on ourselves by ourselves. We didn't wake ourselves up this morning. And when we're able to bring ourselves back to the breath and understand that that is life force energy moving us and moving through us. And in that energy, all solutions lie. All solutions lie. And if I can bring myself back to the breath, I now make myself accessible to that solution energy, to that, that energy that can then reveal who is it that I am to be right now? How is it that I am to show up? So this is the energy that I bring forward, knowing that regardless of what's going on in my world, the power that's moving through me, it is greater than any outside factor condition. There is no condition bigger than the power that is moving through me. And that, that very practical statement and bringing back to the breath literally will calm your nervous system down and give you access to a level of creativity and intelligence that will allow you to move forward differently. Absolutely, 100%. I agree completely. I teach it, I live it, I love it. Thank you so much. Actually, the most recent uh, song I wrote was called, is called Breathe Together For We Are One. Mm. I, yes. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Paula, did you have something, please? So another thing you teach, Sean, that I know is uh, we, I talk a lot about mastery of the mind and that all of our words and actions, of course, begin with a thought. And when that first thought comes in to just label it and say that was fearful, that's a fearful thought. And then to, of course, and you know this, uh, it's to replace it with a with a peaceful, more peaceful thought. And of course, there are many examples of that. And then to focus forward and to just be a, a part of the solution in your families and with all that you, uh, with whom you come in contact. If you are, again, an example of having a peaceful, calm heart, then others, it's, it's like contagious because others then will feel that energy and it, and it will be helpful. Wonderful. So that awareness of the breath and awareness of the thought process and how that's, yes. how that's affecting you and then move forward with that. And actually, this is perfect timing for me, Paula, because I'll just build on that. I feel like people are fearful right now because there's what brings fear up so much is uncertainty. And there's so much uncertainty right now. And so what do we do when we try to deal with uncertainty? Well, we try to control. And, you know, I am the biggest control freak of all time. So I understand this dilemma um, very well because uh, you should have seen my calendar prior to COVID. I had everything so neatly and just like wed everything wedged in one right after the other. And all of a sudden it was like, okay, just erase all this off. You're not going any of these places. Mm -hmm. And um, it really caused me to realize that it's, it is an uncertain universe. And our, when we're trying to control it, 
that's that throws us off. That's we don't find peace. The only way we can find peace is really um, to allow the fam is to allow, and that means that we have to believe that it's a friendly universe. So recognizing that it's an uncertain universe and accepting that is the case and then really believing that it is a friendly universe and that comes I believe from you know the kinds of thoughts that you're going to have and so I started meditating in 1985 and I actually which tells you how old I am I haven't missed a day of meditating since then and I do positive affirmations in my meditation so I say deep in the center of my being is an infinite well of love and I repeat that. And I say, I love myself. I am feeling happier and happier. I am loving myself more and more. And then I say, I choose love. I choose life. I choose health. Mm -hmm. So those are all things that give me a feeling of. And I think the other thing that uh, Felicia said earlier that I'd like to mention here is that so many of us decide that we're, we're going to be happier. Our way of controlling things is to say, I'm going to visualize this particular, you know, I want a car and I'm going to visualize a red sports car. It's got to be a, a, you know, a certain brand and all that. Whereas in fact, all we really should be visualizing is easy transportation. And then whatever comes to us is going to be what's right for us, as opposed to us trying to be too specific, because that's when we're disappointed. And that's, so that's the detachment that I, whoever it was that talked about, I think that that was Felicity as well. That's the detachment, you know, feel like what it is that you want, but make it very general and then don't become attached to specifics. And fear and faith cannot coexist in the same thought or the same emotion at the same moment. So if you find yourself feeling, feeling fearful, I would invite uh, everyone to uh, strengthen your faith in whatever divine connection means to you. Yeah, and wrap your arms around that part that's afraid, right? It's just, it's that part that's afraid is just begging for reassurance. And so it's just that big cosmic divine says, oh, we're okay, we're good. And <laughs> arms around that part and just love them just love her <laughs> yes our, our our inner parent can parent our inner child that's afraid with lollipops and bubble baths and walks in nature and and any of those sorts of things yes as i feel the energy of humanity as i open myself up in my meditation i i, I feel the the need for this, exactly what we're talking about now. We need this in our daily lives. We, and I hope, I hope millions of people listen to this and heed it because this is wisdom. This is powerful. This is world changing. So thank you so much for bringing your wisdom, your, um, your service to humanity for just a few moments uh, for us here today. And I look forward to being in touch with you in the future. What a magnificent group of women and, and wisdom. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for a Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you Namaste. so much. We love you. And for Namaste. those who practice goat yoga, namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Uganda, thank you so much for organizing this and allowing us to um, participate. Yes, yes, thank you, Dr. Y. We love you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Y. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you all and uh, have a wonderful rest of your day. And I look forward thank to you. more sessions in the, in the coming days of the Parliament. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye now.